this video is going to be about ATP accounting. So I've kind of drawn out the big parts of uh, cellular respiration and also the NADH and FADH2 produced by each step. So for glycolysis, we're going to produce two NADHs as well as a net of two ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. So these NADHs will then get transported from the uh, cytoplasm into the mitochondria through one of two ways. You can do it through um, two different electron shuttles, and that's going to influence how much those uh, NADHs are worth, which is why we have two NADH or two FADH2, which uh, would be uh, less productive and produce less ATP than a molecule of NADH. And so then those molecules will go directly to oxidative phosphorylation, but the pyruvate from glycolysis will go on to pyruvate oxidation. So in pyruvate oxidation, we don't produce any ATP, but we do produce two NADHs. And then from there, we uh, make acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA goes to the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle makes two ATP um, equivalents, but it doesn't make um, ATP specifically. Um, and this is all talking about per glucose molecule. So um, for example, for the citric acid cycle, this would be going around twice to produce these two ATPs uh, to fully oxidize one molecule of glucose. So the citric acid cycle also produces six NADHs and two FADH2s from each molecule of glucose. And so we're going to send all of that to the electron transport chain. So when we get to the electron transport chain, we're going to drop those electrons off and use them to pump protons to form a proton gradient that uh, will then flow back down through ATP synthase and allow for oxidative phosphorylation to take place in ATP production to occur. And so when we do that, we produce 26 to 28 ATPs. Um, and again, this variation is coming from uh, uh, how the NADH was transported from the cytoplasm and glycolysis into the mitochondria because there can be differences depending on what transport system you use. So, but that'll produce 26 to 28 ATPs. So when we add all of these up, we get somewhere between 30 and 32 ATPs for one molecule of glucose through the whole uh, process of cellular respiration. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. Thank you.